Hey guys, MC Fix It here. We're gonna be working on a Brone motor that is no longer working. Um, when I start it up, it normally doesn't do anything or it goes really loud and then it kind of just shuts off. So we're gonna see what it kind of does here. We'll flip the light on real quick. And so this time it decided to kind of work, uh, but sometimes you turn it on and you only get the light. Uh, pretty easy fix here, taking out the motor and uh, just putting a new one in its place. Here are the tools and the supplies that you'll need for this project. First thing you're going to need to find out is what kind of motor you need to replace, how many CFMs it is, and all the different things with that. And so this is the one for mine. The model number is a BP27. There'll be a link in the description. And it comes with two different parts. And we will have to put this on here and make it flush. Um, and then you will need something because there will be two nuts and it is an eight millimeter works really well with it you may want an extension this is like a three inch extension and a deep well socket with that eight millimeter with a three eighths ratchet you will want something to pry flathead screwdriver works really well and occasionally the electrician is supposed to put a screw in to kind of hold everything in uh, sometimes they don't but you may want a phillips just in case they did install that they're supposed to but sometimes they forget i guess and a step ladder um, most of the time these are up about eight foot or higher and so you may need an actual ladder but uh, where i'm at just needs a step ladder here are a few additional tools you may need they're kind of optional some kind of a shot vac and extension cord for it and some kind of wrench if that nut is uh, pretty tight on the lamp part and that will help you uh, break that and be able to spin it off by hand, which is what it's supposed to be done by. So the first step is take a flathead screwdriver, go ahead and push this out like that. This will come right out. That also becomes a really nice tray for all the parts and even the bulb. Go ahead and take the bulb, spin it out. So you're going to go ahead and unscrew this little nut here. Most of the time you can get it off by hand. You might need some kind of crescent wrench or something like that to get it off. And then this whole thing will start to just kind of come down. And there is like the light switch right there. You can go ahead and pull it out. Um, some people will want to turn off a breaker. Go ahead if you're comfortable, not comfortable touching anything without that. Uh, but this is just simply like a light switch. You're just going to go ahead and unplug it straight down. Same thing as like an outlet in your house. Uh, make sure everything is off so your switch is off. And what we're going to be looking for is there's one, two, and on this side a third pin. And so these two right here, it may be a little hard to see. Let me give you a little different angle. So these two are kind of a hinge, and then on this side is the one we want to get to. We'll pop that out, and sometimes there's a screw back here, and there's not. So normally there'll be a screw right here just to the left, and then if you pop this out, this whole thing will start to fall down. And on this side, there'll be two of them as well, and sometimes you do have to kind of pull it down. Like you can see, there's just a little bit of excess uh, drywall dust. And you can start to bring that down and you can see how dirty this is too and so this is the piece we're replacing right here and so it's held on with this sometimes there is a screw in here and then those two go in right there and there you will have two different nuts you have to get off and that's that eight millimeter and you may need an extension this one i won't need an extension on but i know i've done one that you had to have an extension And once you break those nuts, I like to just go ahead and take off and just spin them off by hand so you don't end up losing it. Okay. And so that is the old motor and you can see it's been up there 17 years so it's going to look quite a bit different than this one and so kind of the next step is go ahead and get this out of the box and we're going to go ahead and press this one in i found it works best if you're on kind of a hard surface and you just begin to press it downward 
and you got to push it hard but this thing has to sit level and that's the good thing about putting it on a surface there's like a little teeny tiny dot there that was the end of the the shaft there and so that is all you have to do to assemble that and then there are the two nuts right there you're going to put right on just like you did the other so one thing i like to do is go ahead and clean this up before you even install it back on there so a little shot So to put the new motor back on, you go ahead and put the cord through here and you want it to sit like this. So this notch right here in the metal will go where the big part of the motor is. Then you can go ahead and put on by hand your nuts. And it doesn't matter which way you put them. Both of them have some kind of like striation on them to kind of help them lock down. Um, unless yours are different than mine. Uh, that's how these ones were. This is kind of an older one. It's about 17, 18 years old. Because I know the person before us did not do a whole lot of work on this house. So once you go ahead and tighten it by hand, go ahead and put on your ratchet. Put it in drive. And then just kind of tighten it down just an extra little bit. You will want to hold on to it, um, but you're just tightening it down just to make sure it's good and tight. So we're going to want to shot back up in here as well to get all of the excess dirt out or dust out. So you want to be really good about scraping it as you're going up like I did with that shot back. The next thing you're going to do is go ahead and grab your motor assembly. And you want to do this in a very particular order. You're going to want to use the two sides here which go on this side. And you're going to put it up and in. And you see how they're in right here on both sides. That's what you want. And then you want to push it up until this side locks in like it just did right there. This will go into the black one uh, or brown. I can't really tell what the lighting in here, but it's black or brown. And then we will go ahead and put the light socket back. So you're going to want to put this in the same way you took it out which has the outlet on the closer side. Go ahead and plug your outlet in, get this up. You're gonna to wanna to push it up so the stud sticks out. You're gonna put your nut on and tighten down by hand. You don't have to overkill this. Um, you just want it nice and tight and snug in there. Go ahead and put your light in. This is a good time to put an LED one if you have any LED bulbs laying around because you don't always change these out super often. Save some energy. And LEDs last a very long time. Go ahead and put your cover back on it, just like that. Make sure it's all put on. Then let's go ahead and test this new one. That right there is what it's supposed to sound like. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Comment if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching today.